I bought a, a second-hand car privately off a off some chappy. Um, I gave the car a test drive; seemed to be okay. Bought the car, paid the money, insured it, and taxed the car. Didn't really drive it much the next couple of days, but when I did start to drive it and the gearbox started to warm up, there was a problem with the gearbox. I contacted the guy back saying, hey, look, there's a problem with the gearbox. Completely ignored me. Every message and phone call I made, the guy completely ignored me. Um, I've had to get the car repaired because I, I was obviously £2,000 into a car. Um, but luckily for me, I think the mechanic who's doing the repair on the car is the same mechanic that looked at the car before and told the owners that the gearbox is knackered. So I can prove that the gearbox is knackered at fault of for sale. Um, that's help, that's helpful, Richard. I, I don't think it's as helpful as you hope it's going to be, though, I'm afraid. You said this was a private sale. It is, yes. It is a private sale. OK. Um, have you ever heard the phrase caveat emptor? Uh, sold a scene, is that a word? Uh, so, a sold a scene, pretty much. Let the buyer beware, it means. Um, yeah. And with a... If you bought from a garage, if you bought from a dealer, you have a legal right under the Consumer Rights Act that the car is of satisfactory quality. And a car with a defective gearbox is probably not of satisfactory quality. Difficulty is that doesn't apply when you buy it from a private seller. When you buy it from a private seller, the only legal right you have is that the car has to correspond with its description. So if you're being told you're getting a 2021 uh, Daimler, it's got to be a 2021 Daimler. If you're told the gearbox is in good working order, or the mm-hmm. car works well, then they'll yes. be in breach of contract. If they simply said sold as seen, or no. they didn't promise you the car works well, then I'm afraid it's it's caveat emptor, let the buyer beware and you're stuck. Even if they knew yeah, it was yeah, faulty. No, I, I, yeah, I did ask at the time if the car's okay. He said, yeah, no problems, no problems. It was absolutely a lovely little car. The only reason why we're selling it is because you know, his wife's been made redundant. So he's running down that route with it. Oh, well, that, that's good enough. Uh, no problems, lovely little car is... is, is, is a perfectly mm-hmm. valid description, uh, and it wasn't um, a car with no. no problems. So that that is a breach of the description. That that gives lovely, you enough lovely. for a claim, Richard. Um, small claims court, claim two thousand pounds or whatever the cost of repair is. What was the cost of repair? Uh, at the moment, it's fifteen hundred pounds. So pretty much the box. cost of the whole car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I've had it insured and taxed for the last few months because obviously, you know, yep. I can't, you know, I'd keep outside the mechanics. Yep. Well, I, I then I'm, I'm doing a complete U-turn here, Richard. You do have a claim um, in the small claims court. However, of course, there's always the the practical problem. Can you get blood out of a stone? Does does the seller have the money to pay you if you win? Hopefully. Any, any idea? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I know they had £2,000. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Richard, good luck with that. You do have a claim there. I hope it goes well.